Hello Polygoners! Today we're going to be taking a little bit of a break from our new player series, the free to player courses, and going to be doing a more traditional crash course that looks at what are, I guess, called Zerg build orders. Of course, Zerg, we're more the reactive race, so build orders are touchy at best, I guess is the best way to describe them. Essentially, you get a basic structure and some ideas to work with, and it's up to you how to adapt and how to incorporate such things into your play. So let's just talk a little bit about the meta. Let's talk about why it's the meta and kind of what's been happening in the last few months. There's been a huge patch, completely reset the game, great time to launch it with the f2p stuff because well let's face it now everyone's kind of on a more even footing zerg didn't get changed that much i mean you could argue yeah there were some small changes but take a look at something like protoss where they lost an entire unit and it's got replaced by a building so just in case you guys aren't familiar the shield battery recharge thingamabobber um that didn't used to be in the game that came out like two patches ago. It's new and players are still getting used to that. And so we're seeing a switch back into more gateway centric styles. And this is kind of reminding players a lot of Wings of Liberty when Infestor Broodlord was the go-to composition for Zerg in every matchup, but in particular this matchup. Remember games of Archon toilets and all kinds of shenanigans besides. So that's going to be the context within which this game we're looking at takes place. The Protoss is expecting the Zerg to go and fester Broodlord as greedily as possible and is going to do gateway timings at his preferred timings in order to prevent that. Now in our particular game there's going to be less in the form of gateway timings and more in the form of a defensive economic play with Stargate and a fast third which of course means less pressure, less gateway units, and so on. Now there are a few reasons Zerg have chosen to do the Infestor Broodlord composition. Part of that is going to be the recent changes to Infestors. Um, part of that is that Zerg actually feels kind of helpless in the mid game. Mutalisks aren't that good anymore. Hydralisks are solid, but Hydraling Baneling attacks don't really work with the battery chargers. So. A lot of Zerg have just been doing the Infestor Broodlord comp, and that's why the meta is where it's at today. So we're going to be hopping into this game, um, but primarily I want you guys to notice that this is a very standard opener, and you'll notice that even though he's doing Hatch Gas Pool, this could be your opener. And he can do just about anything off this. It's going to be based on certain pieces of scouting information that he decides to, uh, to work with here. And I'm going to post this build order in the description so you guys will have access to it. So don't worry too much about the times here. And once the pool completes, two queens are started as pretty much as soon as possible. This is going to be behind drones and second queen starting up now. Now we do notice that there's two lings on the way. And once ling speed starts, we do pull two off of this gas. And these are, again, just a defensive zone. We're taking a fast third base. And I actually want to back it up here because we see the structure over here on the Zerg base. But I want you to see what's happening on this side of the map as well. Putting it on Jim Rising's vision, watch what he scouts. He sees this being boosted, he sees the Nexus is down, and he's poking in here. He sees the Adept, and typically any kind of um, Robo or any higher level tech, or like a bunch of gateways, you'll be able to see right here with this Overlord. This Overlord, however, sees none of that. And since the Natural is taken by the Protoss, he feels safe going ahead and taking this. Had there been a bunch of gateways down, or maybe not even an expansion, or something crazy like that, this either would be delayed, some decisions would be changing here, but we see what he's looking for, and this is a pretty big moment. Next moment, he's going to go ahead and produce four more links, and this is going to be for some more in-your-face ling pokes on his opponent's side of the map, so he can keep getting a good read on scouting information. Notice the queen zone control? Very easy adept defense here. We've got the defensive zone here with the lings. 
that Adept can't get in there safely, so he's just not going to risk it. Now, we will have a third queen, as you can see in production here. You can actually see the second gateway with this Overlord. So he's got an idea of how many gateways his opponent has. And as you can see, the Ling's definitely just in a position to knock that Adept back should it choose to come in. See, it's still trying to poke in, get some scouting information. Basically, this Adept's just seeing how many drones are being made and whether or not the Protoss will be safe. Now that Ling speed is completed, these Lings are going to be a little more offensive. And now he is seeing these two gases being taken. So he's going to know this is a fairly quick gas. And with these two gases taken, he knows this is probably going to be Stargate. But this is kind of interesting. He starts this Rotorn here at four minutes. He then starts the layer. In addition to that, he gets plus one gas. Now these ideas kind of sync up. Roach Warren's going to protect against Adepts if there's going to be a bunch of Adepts. He's still not 100% sure on that. The layer, of course, unlocks a lot of units and upgrades that he will be interested in. And the second extractor is going to give him the ability to get some of those, but still have a healthy amount of mineral income for drones and links. At this point, he starts a Spore Crawler. Second Spore Crawler starting. And at this point, it has been confirmed that this is going to be airplay. This is a Phoenix. So a Stargate is clearly hidden somewhere on the map. This Overlord could not see it, but of course, this Phoenix did. Now, if you could probably sack one of these Overlords, but Jim Rising chose not to do that. Um, and with this being scouted, he cancels this Roach Warren. We'll see what he chooses to build here, but the canceling of this goes hand in hand with building the Spore Callers. Now, of course, around four minutes, you're gonna wanna throw down Spore Callers because it could be Dark Templar, could be Stargate, all Jim Rising really knew was that it was going to be high level tech based on those gas timings, and Spore Crawler kind of shuts down the initial phases of that regardless of what it is, whether it's Oracles, uh, Phoenix, Void Rays, Dark Templar, any real option, Spore Crawlers are really good at. But why cancel that Roach Warren? It's going to be about the gas. He uh, Remember, he wants to keep a healthy amount of mineral income for drones and lings. And the gas income is mostly going to be his defensive stuff. So you see him starting an evolution chamber immediately. This is going to allow him to start getting upgrades because, let's face it, there's not a lot that Stargate can do when you already have your queen. See, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, killing on these drones. But this is fairly well shut down. Only three, ling or, uh, three drones lost there. And at this point, he is starting a Baneling Nest. So this is taking on the structure of a Hydraling Bane composition. If you are scouting something different, you may want to go with that Roach Warren. Um, if you're seeing more of the, uh, the Gateway style units. However, whether this particular Protoss, because he has open Stargates, he could choose to go Sky Toss. This could just be a transition to a more standard Protoss opener. In either case, though, Hydralisks do great against Gateways, and they do great against Air Units. So Hydralisks are going to be the gas expenditure here. At this point, your games may change, and you may need to develop this build based on what you're scouting. But we're going to look at general concepts and theme, particular to how to deal with someone going for airplay into a normal standard Protoss composition. Airplay is economic and defensive, and that's why you're seeing Jim Rising, who is normally a super aggressive player, take more of a harassment oriented macro style in this particular game. One other thing I'd like to look at is the positioning on this spore crawler. A lot of times you'll see zergs sometimes like put like a spore crawler back here and they'll have openings here where you know maybe they'll have to throw in multiple spore crawlers and once you've got a good economy maybe that's a good idea but in the initial phases this is hands down the best spot to put your spore crawler. Let's say an oracle were parked over here and trying to like phase these out, you would just box a small group of drones and right click here. If the oracle comes, boom. Otherwise, you can just swing your queen in and start harassing, but basically you're only moving half your mineral line instead of the whole mineral line. Notice that he also built it in these first two mineral lines because those are the full ones. If he's got to pull off this one, well, before this point, because it's now starting to get really heavily saturated, he wouldn't have actually lost that much. At this point, you'll see him taking a spore crawler here eventually. At this point, he's going to be getting a third gas. The third gas is going to propel us more into a hydralisk based style. Um, there's no telling how long he would have delayed this gas had he stayed on roaches, but it's just an interesting time nonetheless. 
Also seeing the plus one melee upgrades. This is telling us this will be a Hydro Link mainling style. And as you notice, there's just an intense amount of drones being produced. Right now we're at 48 to 49. So this is a very even game. Both players playing a very macro oriented game. We've got this fourth base down as well. And let's peek on over here. We actually have the Protoss about to be finishing up his third base. So we've got four bases are against three base Protoss, each one of them mining from, you know, three and two respectively. This is a fairly early timing compared to some builds that go more gateway centric and are more oriented on doing damage, but it's not too greedy at all. We also have this fourth gas coming again, just reiterating the fact that we are now on layer tech. And here's that third base spore crawler we were talking about. Behind this, we've got a bunch of lings being produced. We lost the ones from earlier, but with 14 lings in production, you can see that he's just checking this third base and he kind of has an idea of what the timing is because Sky Toss, well, this isn't technically Sky Toss, that's dedicated airplay, but Stargate based openers do tend to get a third base very fast. They are very strong defensively on, on the Protoss side of the map and get significantly weaker on the Zerg side of the map, except for harassment oriented purposes. And what's awesome is that behind this, he's going to be taking a fifth base. Now, here's an interesting note. Most of the time, you want to be expanding in one direction. So like if you're taking this base, this base, this base, it's weird to go this base. And then to go this base, it's going to be hard to get your bases to cluster. Now, Jim Rising is a very, very good player. So don't think this is a criticism. This is actually just an observation because he's doing this in a genius fashion. This base right here is the base that most people are kind of expecting you to take because it's closer to this one and this is the you know expected base because of how it controls this area here so this is the you know next logical base this is kind of a ninja base this is going to be the base with a target on it it's also going to be the base he doesn't saturate initially he can also defend it because again Stargate units just aren't that great at killing bases in small numbers. He's got more than enough queens, not to mention adepts, gonna be on the way to deal with any kind of airplay that does try to kill this base, even if there's gateway units. And if he can't defend it, then he can abandon it and still have this base of economy and production. So this is just really an incredible way of spending his minerals. And at this point, we've got the lings popping and you'll see that they're going to be rallied right into this third base. Jim going to be a little bit caught off guard that there's an army already here, not to mention the base is already up, but this does give him the read he was anticipating. The Oracle getting a little bit of a read on this creep spread, not a big deal. This uh, gateway army going to be moving across the map at this fifth base target location we discussed. At six minutes, he did begin this Hydralisk den. And at this point, we're sitting on 59 drones to 56 probes. The worker count has been very, very even this game. And that is something that typically you don't expect. Zerg is supposed to have the more incredible worker production, but with boost, chrono boost that is, Protoss can significantly amplify their worker production it just takes away their offensive capabilities so that's why you're seeing Jim Rising just go all out base production he's right now sitting on two bases more than his opponent has amazing creep spread has some really strong overlord positioning not to mention lings on pretty much every spot of the map he's also producing a whole bunch of lings this is a direct response to this right here he's still got 10 on the field plus 24 more and what's interesting is he does build this spine crawler as well I think it's a response here but he's building it at the third. The third, definitely an obvious target, especially if this base falls. But a smart Protoss might avoid this, try and clear out some of this creep, and then attack here. Either way, this base is kind of being offered as a target. And as you can see, the gateway units, mostly based on that sentry army there, going to be really useful with the force fields. Um, Oracle, the backbone of this as well. The spellcaster is pretty darn useful. And see how he's kind of zoning away and trying to keep um, the Zerg from getting in too close while he kills this base. A little bit sloppy as he does keep getting distracted by the army. He is not going to be able to kill the base before it completes. And now the wings are there, going to be knocking out a lot of the more damage dealing units. 
So not able to kill that while he had the opportunity. Again, getting distracted by this queen. Kills the queen, but the Hydralisks are here. Great timing on that by the gem Arising, who has also started upgrades for his Hydralisks. And as you can see, the base does fall. But it's just a mulligan base. There is still this base all the way down here. But for that, you'll have to come back next time where we're going to be getting deeper into this build order and how to transition into the mid game once you repel the first gateway timing attacks. Guys, I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. If you like this content, make sure you like this video. Visit us on Patreon, patreon.com slash polygon 2 Link is in the description. And if this is your first time to the channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button. As always, guys, Chatelet, my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.